Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Okay, so last time we have seen the uh, differential reactivity uh, of axial and equatorial uh, functional groups in a cyclohexane system, but the systems that we have uh, handled were the locked, uh, were in locked conformations, okay, like by putting the tertiary butyl at the four position. But there may be, there are plenty of systems where which are freely convertible into one conformation in, uh, and the other one. Okay. There are various possible conformations unlike the locked conformation systems. So, the situation will be little bit different when we deal with such a system. Okay. So, let us first define the problem. Suppose a molecule has two conformations can exist in two conformer as two conformer one is E another is E okay. and they are in equilibrium with each other. So, what I am saying that a particular system can exist in two conformations or rather two conformers which are in equilibrium with each other. Now, I try to do a reaction a chemical reaction on this system. So, this will react because this is a different entity as it is in a different conformation. So, they will react with their own rates. Okay. So, E gives suppose this also another uh, criteria I put in here that this generates a product which is say I say P E and this generates a product which is P A. Okay. Now, so basically I have a system where there are two conformers present A and E they are interconvertible and they are they are extremely rapidly interconvertible. That means, if there is a dearth of A, then E goes to E A, or if there is a dearth of A in the system, then A goes to E. So, that in interconversion is very fast as compared to the rate of the reaction. So, rate of the reaction are these, these are sl slower, much slower as compared to this rate of interconversion between A and E. And so, that is uh, the first restriction that this is the rapidly interconvertible and these reactions that I am doing on E and A are slower than this uh, interconversion rate. And a fourth and the third thing that I put is that there is no interconversion between the two products. So, P A cannot be converted to P E or P E cannot be converted to uh, P A. Now, in that case if all these things are satisfied that means, rate of interconversion is fast, rate of reaction is much slower as compared to the rate of interconversion and the products are different and these products are not interconvertible. Now, the question is what will determine the ratio of these two products P E by P A. So, concentration of P E versus concentration of P A. So, which parameter will decide? Now, one might think that suppose I started with 90 percent of A and 10 percent of E that is the ground state population of A and E. And just from the population difference one might say that P A will be formed because A was present in 90 percent and P E will be less because E was present only in 10 percent, but that is not true. In a conformationally dynamic system, this is what is called conformationally dynamic system, what happens uh, if these restrictions are followed that the rate of reaction is slower as compared to the rate of interconversion and the products do not lead to the uh, cannot interconvert, then the ratio of the two products first of all it does not depend on the ground state population of the conformers. It does not depend on the ground state population of the conformers. Okay. 
then what factor it, it really depends? The factor that decides the ratio of these two is the difference in the in the Gibbs free energy of the two transition state is the difference energy of the. So, it depends on the free energy difference of the respective transition states. Transition states. Okay. Now, to I think this will be a little bit clear if I draw the energy energy diagram to show you the case. Okay. Suppose this is the conformer A and this is the conformer B okay. and they have a barrier of course, there will be a barrier to interconversion, but that barrier is very small okay. that barrier is very small. On the other hand, so suppose this is E, we have considered this as E. Now, suppose this is reacting and giving a product which is Pa, that means one conformer leads to one product and the other conformer leads to another product. Suppose that has got a higher activation energy. So, this is Pe. So, according to what is called now the Cartin Hammett principle, the ratio of Pe and Pa will depend on the free energy difference. This is called del del G hash. The free energy difference between the two transition states, this is the transition state for reaction of A and this is the transition state for reaction of E. Okay. So, this difference will decide there is a relationship uh, there is a relationship that is P E by P A is equal to E to the power minus del delta G hash by R T. So, basically temperature is a factor, but another major factor is the free energy that the difference in the Gibbs free energy of the transition state. So, that will decide. So, it immediately tells you that it does not matter what is the population here. If the rate of E, if the rate of E is more than the rate of conversion of A to P A, that means, if the that transition state of E lies lower than the transition state of A, then the product from E will be more or the vice versa. If the transition state of A lies at a lower level than the transition state for the for the E, then A will react at a faster rate and because that means the activation energy is also less otherwise why it will be at a lower level. And if that is the case like here the activation energy of this is less than the activation of energy of this. So, now I can say in the, if this is the situation then P A will be more and P E will be less okay. irrespective of the fact that E was more stable than A. So, in the ground state population E was more than A, but that is not the decisive factor. The decisive factor is the is this difference that means basically which transition state the other way to speak it that which transition state is more stable and which activation energy is more or less that will the that will be the guiding factor. Okay. So, it is not always true that the the population of the conformer the conformer which is more populated will give the major product that is not true. Okay. Now, this is what is called the Cartin Hammett principle. The Cartin Hammett principle can be can be said in different ways. Uh, the relative amounts of one way to say it is the relative amount of the product formed from two con critical conformations that means, two extreme conformations are completely independent of the relative population of the conformations and depend only upon the difference in the free energy of the transition states as I said provided the rates of the reactions are slower than the rates of conformational interconversion. As I said the rate of in interconversion should be very fast uh, and uh, this is the other way to say the reverse way the rate of reaction are slower than the rates of conformational interconversion. The in another way you can say it in a chemical reaction more elaborate 
Lee, you can say yields of one product from one conformer, conformational isomer or a conformer. And so, in a chemical reaction that yield one product from one conformational isomer and a different product from another conformational isomer and provided that these isomers are rapidly interconvertible relative to the rate of the product formation, whereas the products do not undergo interconversion. So, the first definition was not very correct because it never said the interconversion between P A and P. That should not happen in a cartoon Hammett system. So, provided that there is the, the products do not undergo interconversion, the product composition is not in direct proportion to the relative concentrations of the conformational isomers in the substrate, it is controlled only by the difference in standard Gibbs energies of the respective transition states. Okay. So, uh, this is I think the more correct version of cartin hammett principle and I gave you the equation, but this can be derived also this equation, but that is uh, uh, not within the scope of this of this uh, subject. So, again I go to the energy diagram. So, what cartin hammett principle says that first of all this barrier is much less as compared to the trans that activation energies that is number 1. So, they rapidly interconvert to each other uh, and the product ratio of product C and D will depend on the difference, difference of this energy this minus this and that is the deciding factor. Okay. Now, the question is whether uh, we will come to the examples of cartin hammett principle. So, the most striking example for a cartin hammett principle will be to show that a conformer which is the least expected conformer is giving the major product, which is however, very hard to find, uh, hard to find because most of the time it has been found that the major conformer is actually having a higher rate of reaction. That means, a lower activation energy that is in most of the cases, but we will we'll go we will discuss all these cases and try to find out a case where the minor conformer gives the major product, because that will be a direct proof for the cartin hammett principle. If the major conformer gives the major product, then you might say that oh actually it is the ground state population which is dictating the uh, process. So, it is the best process the best way to prove the cartin hammett principle is to show that the minor conformer gives the major product. Okay. So, we will come slowly into that. The first example, again I remind you now we are now dealing with a conformationally labile system. Okay. So, conformationally labile system that means molecules which can exist in various conformations. Sir. So, if I want to make 2 butene from 2 bromo butene by elimination by E 2 elimination. You know that if I treat this with alcoholic KOH, then what happens? This is eliminated the beta hydrogen most of the product is the, the Sedgef product and not the Hoffman, because there is another possibility of beta elimination from this side, but the major product is this one. Now, this major product again can be cis or trans. So, you have the cis versus the trans. So, the actual diagram is this the methyl on this side. So, either this product or you can have the trans isomer. The question is which one will be formed in major amount. Now, here we know that this molecule this 2 bromo butane we can consider it in existing in two conformations, one where the methyls are in the gauche form. Okay. So, there are two staggered conformations we are considering in one the methyls are in the are in the gauche positions, whereas in the other the methyls are in the anti position. Okay. Now, we are considering these two staggered conformations. Uh, in order to have a hydrogen a beta hydrogen which is aligned opposite to the to the bromine atom. The bromine atom is leaving, so also the hydrogen it is an E 2 elimination 
and uh, so we have to have a hydrogen opposite to the bromine and while doing so we can find two conformers one is this one this is the gauche conformer and this is the anti conformer obviously the anti conformer will be the will be the major conformer because of this gauche butane interactions it will be less and uh, this methyl bromine interaction is there in both the in both the systems so this will be the conformation which is less because of the gauche butane interaction this is more okay now the mechanism of e2 elimination okay we have not done any uh, stereochemistry of sn1 sn2 or e2 but just to say uh, the e2 elimination in the e2 elimination what is happening that you have a x here and you have a hydrogen okay beta hydrogen we are talking about beta elimination okay now in all the reactions there is something which is called stereoelectronic factor what is uh, and steric factor steric factor we know is the is the repulsion between two groups between two bulky groups when they come very close to each other and that affects the uh, rate of a reaction the other thing is the most important uh, parameter is the stereoelectronic parameter what is that stereoelectronic parameter is says that in a chemical reaction the reaction will take place in such a way that the transition state involved in the reaction is stabilized to the maximum that means in order to do that the orbitals that are see what is a chemical reaction bonds are broken and new bonds are made so when this bond breaking and bond making processes are going on the orbitals are realigned okay they are they are pairing with different uh, with differently than the substrate okay like in in elimination we know that there is a formation of a double bond here and with the expulsion of h plus and x minus okay so there is now the orbitals are now changing their their partners okay the stereoelectronic factor says that the orbitals in the transition state the orbitals are in aligned in such a way so as to maximize the overlap that is involved in the transition state to maximize the overlap of the orbitals in the transition state again i repeat stereoelectronic factor says that in a reaction chemical reaction the transition state should be such that allows maximum overlap of the involved orbitals that are being broken or that are or orbitals that are participating in the reaction okay like in this is the e2 elimination here the stereoelectronic requirement is that the hydrogen and the x should be anti to each other and in sn2 reaction in sn2 reaction the stereoelectronic requirement is that this the nucleophile should approach from the back side not only from the back side but it should be aligned to the cx axis opposite to the cx axis okay so stereoelectronic factor demands that it approaches the carbon which is undergoing substitution approaches the carbon from behind the leaving group not only behind the leaving group it should be just aligned with the cx axis so that is the stereoelectronic requirement now why are these i said because the transition state uh, in the transition state there is maximum overlap of the orbitals that are involved like here we know that there is this this is the suppose this is the orbitals there is a small part of the orbital here okay now if you consider actually i took it small if this is the bonding scenario in the anti bonding scenario there is a bigger lobe on the back side which is empty anti bonding orbital so when the nucleophile comes so if the nucleophile comes through this side there will be less overlap of the orbitals only if it comes from the from just exactly opposite to the cx axis then the overlap is much more the overlap is much more on the other hand if it comes from inclined position which is also back side of cx but the extent of overlap will be less so it approaches from the back side and opposite to the cx axis okay so that is the stereoelectronic requirement 
of SN2 reaction and you know the consequence of this. This leads to what is called Walden inversion that is inversion of configuration. In E2 elimination very similar things happens that the base approaches from here takes the hydrogen E2 means it is a uh, bimolecular reaction. So, the base is involved in the rate determining step. So, now that comes here and these goes there. So, in terms of orbital uh, orbital approach if you break it into orbitals and this was the hydrogen. So, in the transition state what will happen now uh, this this carbons are becoming almost sp 2. So, there will be there will be maximum overlap between these orbitals between these orbitals if it approaches if they are if they are uh, perfectly anti to each other because if there is an angle between the or uh, between these lines C x and C h then the p orbitals or semi p orbitals uh, which are generated uh, during the reaction they cannot be uh, aligned to each other. So, if there is a angle so the, uh, the overlap will be less that means the transition state will be less stabilized. So, that is the reason that this should be perfectly anti to each other. So, that is E 2 elimination stereoelectronic requirement of E 2 elimination. So, it the hydrogen which is eliminated should be anti to the to the group to the living group. Okay. Now, let us come back to this slide again. So, this is your one conformation and this is the other conformation. Now, the hydrogen both the conformations there is a hydrogen which is uh, anti to the bromine. So, the base abstracts this hydrogen and it comes attacks the back carbon bearing the bromine. So, bromine leaves. So, in the process what happens this carbon becomes sp 2 and the back carbon becomes sp 2. So, the hydrogen now and the methyl will eclipse each other. So, hydrogen and the methyl will eclipse each other and so that will lead to because the methyls are in the opposite direction. So, that will lead to the formation of the the trans product which is the 2 E also the called the E configuration right. We know the E z stereochemistry now. On the other hand if there is elimination here then what happens this hydrogen is lost this bromine is lost these methyls will now come closer to each other and methyls will come closer to each other and that will form the cis 2 butene. Okay. Cis 2 butene. Now, the rate of reaction of this is is more because uh, because of the said that there is much uh, less interaction so, as this hydrogen approaches this methyl here. Here these two methyls become e eclipsing to each other as the reaction proceeds I can again draw it continue the Newman projection. So, this was the hydrogen this was the hydrogen this is bromine this is a methyl that is a methyl and this is a hydrogen. So, when this hydrogen is taken up by the base so, this comes here the bromine goes out. So, what happens in the Newman projection it will look like this. So, this is methyl and that is methyl this is hydrogen this is hydrogen that means they are now approaching in a, a an eclipsing orientation. So, that is the cis that is the cis compound or the z isomer. Okay. So, the z isomer there is increase of eclipsing interactions as the reaction goes. So, that has got higher activation energy as compared to the other isomer. What is the other isomer? There is methyl here and methyl here this is bromine that is hydrogen here. So, this is the other isomer. So, as the reaction proceeds sorry this hydrogen here as the reaction proceeds the base. So, that goes here this goes out and there is now eclipsing interaction between hydrogen and methyl which is much less as compared to a methyl methyl. So, the product will be the top one will be hydrogen the bottom one will be methyl and here the top one will be methyl and the bottom one will be hydrogen. So, this is the trans that means the E isomer. So, the E isomer will obviously more irrespective of the population of these two, but here unfortunately this is the 
major population, the major the conformer which is more populated uh, and uh, but the reason for getting the trans isomer is not due to that this is populated in a uh, populated mode. The reason is that there is this has got less activation energy for conversion compared to the, the gauche compared to this conformation. So, that is the reason why this is more and this is less. Okay. But as I said that if the major conformer gives the major product, then it is very difficult to convince students that uh, the reason is actually uh, is, is the kinetic reason not the ground state population, but it is very difficult to convince the students. So, I said that we should have a an example where where the minor population the minor populated conformer gives the major product. Okay. This is an extreme example that this is neomenthyl chloride. I, I talked to you about the menthol neomenthol where chlorine is replaced by OH, but this is suppose the neomenthyl chloride. Now, this has got two conformations conformers, but one is highly populated that is uh, where the chlorine is axial, methyl is equatorial and this isopro isopropyl is equatorial. If it flips then the isopropyl becomes axial the here this is a big group uh, and this is also quite big only the equatorial the only uh, benefit you have is putting the chlorine in the equatorial position, but uh, you gain you actually forcing these big groups in the axial position. So, this is only present in 1 percent and that is about 99 percent. So, this is the uh, this is the one uh, which is not present at all. So, again here is that the chlorine has to eliminate if, it, if I want to produce a beta elimination then either this hydrogen is lost or this hydrogen is lost. So, again uh, only these two compounds are formed and not uh, the compounds from this conformer uh, not from this conformer. So, that uh, that is not a correct example again a true example or an example which proves the uh, the curtin Hammett principle here also again the major conformer giving the major product. So, again one can argue whether it is due to population difference or uh, due to the kinetic kinetic uh, that is playing playing a part. Here the kinetic says that this cannot eliminate because there is no hydrogen opposite to the chlorine. So, only this can produce the product. Okay. Now, let us come to a real example where the where the actual where the minor isomer gives the major product. Okay. So, this is a compound a, a bicyclic compound it is a bicyclo as a bicyclo compound as a which is a bicyclic compound see like this see so, you have this is the example of a bicyclic compound okay these are named probably you, whether you know this or not this is 2 to 1 bicyclo then the total number of carbons 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so this is 2 to 1 bicyclo heptane 2 to 1 bicyclo maybe these are dots 2 to 1 bicyclo heptane. Okay. So, similarly if you look at the look at this compound what is shown here this is this is your 2 this is 3 carbons here. So, 3 to 1 bicyclo as a and the total number of atoms is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8. So, bicyclo as a octane. So, this is bicyclo as a octane. Let me draw it here in the board. Okay. So, what we are talking about is a system and there is a nitrogen here. So, this is the as I said this is this is 2 this is 3. So, 3 2 1 bicyclo as a 
So, number of atoms in the ring is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 including the nitrogen. So, that will be as a octane by cycle as a octane. Now, this has got a suppose I take the methyl group. So, n methyl n methyl by cyclo as a octane. Now, this has got two conformations depending on the that is due to the speed that is the inversion of the nitrogen. Okay. So, either the methyl is on this side or the methyl is on the other side. So, the methyl is on this side and the lone pair on this side. Now, between these two, between these two, because of the presence of the larger portion of the ring, so you have lot of hydrogens on the top, here you have hydrogens here and there. So, there are more interactions of these hydrogens with these methyls. Okay. So, as a result, this one will be the major, major conformer and this one will be the minor one. This one will be the minor one. Now, suppose I do an in alkylation. In the in the literature, they have done the alkylation with a with a labeled methyl iodide. But I can uh, to simplify the system. Suppose I add ethyl bromide. So what will happen? The ethyl bromide will react. The nitrogen will attack it in a SN2 fashion. So there will be now ethyl group. So I can erase this lone pair. Now there will be ethyl group on this side the nitrogen is plus and there will be ethyl group on this side. Okay. Now, the question is which one is these two uh, compounds are not same. Now, the inversion is also not taking place. So, they are mirror images of each other. Okay. Which compound is more? First of all, this is major conformer, but the problem is the approach of this ethyl because of these hydrogens, the approach of the ethyl bromide from this side will be difficult as compared to the approach of the ethyl from this side. Okay. So, now the major product will be this one, the major product will be this one that is coming out from a minor isomer, from the minor conformer, whereas the major conformer leads to a minor product. Okay. So, major I can show it to here and that will end up this uh, lecture session that you have this compound and this compound. As I said because of the longer uh, because of three carbons here. So, you have more steric repulsion with the methyl if the methyl is on this side that is why this one is less stable and this one is more stable as you have less hydrogens uh, less carbons here that means less number of uh, axially oriented hydrogens. So, this is the less stable conformer, this is the most stable conformer. Now, this was treated with not ethyl iodide, uh, not ethyl bromide, but for simplicity I said ethyl bromide. This was treated with a 13 C labeled methyl iodide. 13 C label means that is a different carbon. So, what will happen? Now, the methyl is uh, when the nitrogen lone pair on this side, then this attracts here the methyl, but the problem is the approach of this methyl iodide uh, to this. Uh, to this lone pair is, is difficult because this is the larger portion of the ring. So, that is less accessible. On the other hand, it is easier for this lone pair to attack the ethyl bromide from this side because this side is easily accessible. So, again I repeat this side is less accessible that is why the lone pair attack onto the methyl iodide will be, will be uh, less facile from this side than the lone pair attack from this phase to the methyl iodide. So, what happens? This becomes the major product because this side is more, this face is more face, uh, is more available, sterically accessible. So, this becomes major product and that becomes minor product. Okay. So, this is the classic example where the more stable conformer that means more populated conformer is giving the minor product and the less populated conformer is giving the major product. I think this is the best example which proves the validity of the 
cartin hamet principle okay so we will discuss uh, more problems next day uh, today i think that is it that's so you end up with saying that population is not the determining step for uh, systems which follows cartin hamet uh, principle systems where equilibration is very rapid between the conformers but the rate of the reaction is slower then what happens the the product ratio is not governed by the population ground state population it is governed by the uh, the free energy difference between the transition states okay that is a very important concept in stereochemistry in dynamic stereochemistry with conformational labile systems thank you